Hello and welcome to the Lightboard session. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about three types of clouds categorized by their service models. And these three types are the infrastructure as a service or IaaS, the platform as a service, which is PaaS, PaaS, and the software as a service or also called as SaaS. To understand the difference between these three, uh, I'm going to give you and talk about another example. Let's say there are three different types of entities who are looking for office space. That is one, the first entity is a very large organization with let's say 10,000 people that they want to accommodate. Now, as per the requirement, uh, they're looking for an office space and what they're looking for is just an empty shell probably just an empty building, they just the infrastructure, and then they take that infrastructure and then they would bring in their architects, their interior decorators, and they would you know, design according to their needs, uh, the workspaces, everything, right from the furniture to paint, uh, to uh, you know, interiors, to desks, to cubicle, design of the cubicles, everything. They want to design everything, they want to complete control over everything. All they need is a bare shell. The second entity is a smaller organization with, uh, let's say, 200 people, employees. And uh, instead of building everything of their own, what they're looking for is to hire maybe like two floors in a technology park where they get not only infrastructure, but also the ready-made office with um, you know, the carpets, the furniture, the desk, the cubicles. Uh, and that's what they're planning to hire and you know the, that's what they're planning to rent and they'll basically take the computers just set it up uh, they would have all the rest of the infrastructure available and then they'll just put the people and uh, they start working right off they go and the third entity is let's say a freelancer and a smaller organization a startup like me who's looking for a place but uh, let's say i don't have a lot of budget that's one second is i don't want to go and uh, customize everything i don't have neither the time nor you know nor the money to do that so what i would want is uh, a completely ready to you know just plug and play kind of for office space where i could hire uh, probably a few desks uh, maybe a cabin uh, maybe a studio like this, a room like this, and then I would just go and uh, take my laptop there, connect it to the internet, and I would expect everything to be in place, including the office, the you know the common areas, uh, the coffee machines, and uh, everything else that I would need, including the internet and so on and so forth. Right now, if you look at these three types of entities and their requirements. Uh, each of them have some specialized requirements and based on that, they would pick the option for the office space. And when we talk about these, it is exactly similar comparison that uh, we can do here. Let's say when you talk about an infrastructure as a service, you get a lot of control. So what you basically go and ask for is, hey, I want the infrastructure pieces. I want to set up everything on my own. I want to have a complete control over the kind of infrastructure that I build, kind of servers that I you know, set up, the sizes of the servers, uh, the storage that I would require, uh, the network configurations that I want to make, everything I want have to have a control over that. And that is an example of the infrastructure as a service. An example of an infrastructure as a service could be uh, cloud services like, let's say, AWS, GCP, uh, Microsoft Azure. A lot of Azure services fall under this category, even though uh, there are certain services which fall under the second, which is PaaS. Now, with infrastructure as a service, what you can get from a service provider is uh, the infrastructure components like compute, uh, network, storage, databases, and then there are a bunch of other things that you can avail from them and then use them to set up everything on your own, uh, manage it on your own, and then you basically sort of install your software, configure it, everything is done by you basically, right? But you get a lot of controls over there. Now, talking about platform as a service, in certain cases, you don't need to build the entire infrastructure on your own, but you would want to leverage a lot of lot of components which are already there. Uh, some of the examples of PaaS are some of the Microsoft Azure services, some of the AWS services like Elastic Beanstack, for example, uh, 
uh, some, you know, um, I will just say EB, Elastic Beanstalk of uh, AWS. Uh, there is, if you are talking about container-based uh, services and deployments, you have a, you know, platform called as OpenShift by Red Hat, which is also a platform as a service. I'll just talk about one of this, let's say OpenShift. Let's say you want to deploy your applications with containers. In order to do that, you not only need to know about Docker and should have a good working knowledge, operational knowledge about it, but also an orchestration engine which helps you to deploy your container workloads in a production-like environment. And that is where it comes to Kubernetes. So instead of learning about Docker and Kubernetes, where you should have a good operational knowledge of both of these uh, in depth because you would be running your infrastructure, let's say, in production. Instead of doing that, what you could do is say that, hey, I don't um, know about Docker or Kubernetes. Let's say if I'm a developer, I may not know about uh, all of this at all. I may be running a startup. I may just have an idea and I have written the code. Let's say I have, a re I have written the code in Node.js and, uh, you know, uh, some JavaScript like React and uh, so on. And uh, I may have a database, which is MySQL. And all I care about is running this application in a production-like environment and all the infrastructure, the network, the compute, the storage, the databases, everything should be auto-provisioned by somebody else. But I should, I want to run it on a containers, basically. So in that case, instead of going for an infrastructure as a service, uh, which would be setting up your infrastructure, on cloud like AWS or GCP or Azure, then installing and configuring uh, everything, including Docker, Kubernetes. In certain cases, you can get a managed service as well, um, but that might fall under uh, a pass again, right? And then on top of that, instead of figuring out how to deploy your application, you can just go to a platform like OpenShift where you can just point your source code repository and the OpenShift will automatically take your source package it into a Docker image. So you go from your source to an image and uh, you know that image and then is taken and deployed at scale in uh, using the container-based workloads and it would also deploy the databases and everything else, connect them together, uh, set up a load balancer on top of that, uh, set up the networking configuration. So everything else is done in an automated way. And that is an example of platform as a service. The third, you don't have a lot of control over platform because the platform is given to you, it is automatically configured uh, on its own. All you get uh, is basically a deployed application. It scales on its own as well. Uh, you don't have a control over it and you may not need it. So it depends on what you are really looking for. And a good example of the third category, a software as a service is, I mean, you can come up with so many examples here. In fact, any application that you use today where you don't have to install the software on your desktop or your laptop, typically falls under software as a service. That can also include, let's say, services like Gmail, services like Dropbox, where you can store your stuff on the cloud, uh, services like uh, force.com, uh, force.com is actually past for Salesforce actually, uh, but anything else that you use, uh, consume daily, let's say I'm um, using, uh, you know, a f even like things like Photoshop uh, and Lightroom, I can actually uh, transform my photos on the cloud and work with it and edit it and so on on the cloud maybe. Uh, so you can actually do that uh, or anything that you can do on the cloud using a browser instead of installing a software locally falls under the software as a service category, right? Uh, now, this is the difference between the type of clouds that you consume uh, based on what features that you need, how much control that you require, and how much capability that you have handling of this infrastructure. And based on that, you are going to pick the type of cloud for the purpose that you need and based on the audience that you are. And that is the difference between the three types of clouds based on their service models.